The market for network automation software is worth billions of dollars a year and growing rapidly, according to a recent report from Appledore Research. But what's driving the growth? Which companies are the market leaders? And how is artificial intelligence, the hottest tech topic of the moment, impacting the sector? Well, to find out, I'm talking today with Robert Curran, consulting analyst at Appledore Research. So Robert, uh, great to see you again. Thanks very much for joining us today. Um, so the report covers developments in the network automation software market. Uh, is this basically the equivalent of the new generation OSS software? Yes, indeed, Ray. Uh, thanks for having me on to talk about this this topic. Uh, absolutely. Um, we looked at the market as was, you know, three, four years ago and, and really concluded that the term the term OSS, which is wide use uh, back then, really wasn't uh, reflecting how operators were changing their behavior and how vendors were responding to what was going on in the marketplace. So we felt it necessary to look at the market with a much more sort of forward-looking uh, perspective, uh, taking into account you know, the, the factors that were really changing under the surface. Uh, you know, firstly, the move towards you know, more virtualized uh, networks, softwareized networks, um, the move to cloud, the impact of cloud in general from an architectural point of view and infrastructure uh, level. And really the third was the kind of renewed focus on, on automation at scale. Um, and really, you know, we played that perspective out on, you know, onto the market and created a, a, you know, a new market taxonomy around network automation software, which we think better reflects kind of what's happening in the market. So even if you look at overall OSS and some sense BSS spend, you know, headline numbers aren't moving that much, but that kind of masks what's really going on underneath. So that's why we took a view of looking at, you know, where the market was going um, and trying to uncover you know, what was happening in these new, these new areas, these new segments. And that was even really um, before AI started to have you know significant impact. So again, that's another thing I know we'll talk about in a moment. But uh, you know how the market is evolving as a result of that too. Okay, well that 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 makes a lot of sense because there is a lot changing uh, behind the scenes in the way networks are run. Um, so looking at the market from this uh, perspective, which companies are regarded as the market leaders in terms of product portfolios and sales? Uh, but also in terms of innovation. So when we look at the market today, network automation software as a whole, um, just look at the top five leaders. It's Nokia, uh, followed closely by Huawei, and then we have IBM, VMware, Ericsson. It's an interesting mix. The four out of those five are uh, also you know, feature strongly in the leaders among uh, one segment, which is domain management, which is the, the largest single segment uh, of the market. Um, and certainly, you know, their position in the market is is down to having a lot of appeal um, with more innovative features that respond better to uh, to what operators are trying to do in, in moving into this into this new world. Um, so certainly, we would call those companies out. They are by definition innovators. One interesting aspect that we found in our assessment, uh, looking at, at last year, um, was that the proportion of the market that's being uh, given to other players. Uh, not just the leaders, is actually growing. So when we did this two years ago, uh, we estimated that figure was about a little over a third of the market. Um, this year, it's more than half uh, of the market. And that suggests that, you know, telcos are looking at spend with a wider range of uh, of providers, uh, not just the, the leaders. Um, and that's where you see, you know, the range of interesting companies in, in that space. Some of them, you know, large and established players, you know, the the, the Amdocs, Oracles and so on, certainly feed into that uh, category, uh, Netcracker. But then, you have people like Rack and Symphony coming in there, very, very innovative companies. And then through to people like Cohere Technologies, even, even ServiceNow in Manta, you know, there's a huge range of, of companies who are innovating and you know, trying to do something new, bring something new to the market, uh, new ideas. And, and that's, you know, it's, it's encouraging to see that telcos are, are looking at and you know, awarding the business to those kind of companies as well. Now, the, the overall sector grew by 42% in just two years and was worth more than 6.2 billion US dollars in 2022, just last year. Is that a faster pace of growth than you had anticipated? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, it's a little bit lower than we had uh, forecast, um, uh, but not by much. I think we forecast about 6.9 and we're looking at 6.2. Um, forecasts are always are always wrong uh, to some degree. Uh, I think we're you know we're happy that it's in line with what we expected. I think some of the um, some of the difference you know might be explained by maybe a little bit of inertia uh, among telcos. Uh, certainly through you know post COVID and looking at some of the other areas, you know I think the general mood in the marketplace is things like five G, 
private networks, open RAN, are all running a little bit slower than people expected. Not massively slower, but a little bit slower. And, and so I think that certainly post, uh, post-pandemic uh, and with the wider economic situation, uh, you know, telcos are looking at what they spend on trying to prioritize you know, very hard um, and, and make you know, strong business cases for things. So again, let's put it in perspective. Network automation, shift, network automation software has grown very substantially. Um, it, it's certainly the direction of travel is very, very clear. Um, it, it is a significant market. It is growing. Um, but there are these factors. You know, we can't we can't assume that just because it's a good idea that it automatically will happen. There's still a lot of you know a lot of legacy there and a lot of, I think you know challenges for operators in trying to adopt a new model, embrace some very very different ideas. Uh, again, the, the conferences that we've all been to through the last. 18 months or so have been full of telcos saying, look, we really have to do something different and we have to do something fundamentally different, but it's a challenge. Um, so I think that's maybe why we see some of the uh, slight kind of uh, difference in our forecast. But again, looking to the future, it, this isn't a market that's kind of slowing down in, in that sense. Um, it's definitely, you know, the traffic is all, all one way. Yeah, I mean, it's clear there's a, a lot of pieces of the the puzzle to get in place for, for these things to to move forward, and uh, like you said, that doesn't always happen as quickly as people expected. Um, now, you broke the market up into a number of subsectors, and, and the network data management subsector that grew by almost 140 percent in two years. Uh, what's driving such dramatic growth for that particular set of network automation tools? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's interesting. I think it's a, it's a reflection of just how data centric um, this area is becoming you know automation I think to some extent uh, you know was looked on as as being you know work, workflow um, for, for many situations in many cases actually what's changing is that data is, is absolutely central for that and that's right across the business network data customer data uh, you know information about infrastructure um, it's all essential information plus you know retail plus external factors and so on um, this is really how the telco of the future will operate. I mean, data is absolutely that that um, you know central nervous system. You know of, of how they can gain efficiency and gain in, insight. So I think there's a few different things happening there. Um, firstly, is is realizing that the data is essential. So everything about how you collect it, manage it, analyze it, you know, and then feed it back into other systems is is becoming you know very very clearly uh, integral to the whole process. I think the second thing is partly as a result of softwareization. And virtualization is that players who previously, you know, were working purely in enterprise IT, enterprise networking space, are now starting to feature in this network data management space. So I think as we've looked at what's going on, uh, you know, where telcos are spending their money, who they're spending it with, um, that's kind of shone a spotlight on, on how much is actually being invested in companies to, to manage this kind of central uh, data backbone. Um, so I think you know, there's a number of different ways this plays out. Some of it is is a large por- portion of it is network optimization related in you know, trying to improve the network, um, improve efficiency, particularly power efficiency, but all the way through to, to the customer service side of things. So customer experience in terms of what services are, are customers having, what experience customers are having in, in real time um, and trying then to, to constantly kind of tune and adapt. So I think you know, there's a mix of different reasons for uh, for why this is becoming, you know, why this has grown so much as, a, as an area for us. Okay, yeah, I mean, that, that makes a lot of sense. There's so much talk in the operator community about how to, you know, collect and make better use uh, of all the data that the operators uh, have at their fingertips. Uh, now, another hot area is, of course, artificial intelligence, as we already mentioned, and everything about AI is hot right now. And one of the other subsectors you covered in this report is AI ops. Uh, what kind of functionality does that cover and include? And how does the Apple Door team see this area developing? So AI ops uh, really references uh, you know, anything that's going to you know, automate by using data and making sense of the data that you've got, particularly in that sort of zero touch, closed loop uh, sort of idea. In terms of you know, functional uh, uses of this, Really, there's kind of four primary categories. One is identifying anomalies uh, in, in network data, uh, in network performance and behavior. Um, a second group is is predicting kind of a future outcome of some kind, a future failure or a future event, or a threshold breach, something like that. Um, the third is looking at uh, the root cause of problems. Again, trying to correlate uh, information from many different sources uh, and, and get to the, the ultimate source. Um, and the fourth one is, is uh, you know, category of systems which will learn kind of best practice 
uh, over time and then be able to recommend that back uh, to, you know, to, to engineers and, and, and support teams uh, in different contexts. I, those are the main sort of areas of, of functionality that, uh, that AI, which is largely used as a sort of proxy for, for machine learning more specifically, but it's, it's still a huge area. And so what operators are trying to do is to, is to improve the ability of networks to heal themselves, um, obviously to improve things like you know, power consumption without uh, compromising service experience. Um, security is a huge uh, part of this as well, uh, understanding how to keep networks safe and, and identify you know, anomalous behaviors. Uh, that's massively changed both for telcos and, uh, and for enterprises in recent years. And even into you know, areas like revenue optimization, you know, where, where can I uh, incentivize or run campaigns or, or offer services with a greater likelihood of, of uptake? So, so AI Ops really covers a, you know, a huge a huge range of, of activities. That's why it's such a significant area within network automation software. I mean, no surprise, you know, we expect this area is going to grow uh, significantly. Uh, even in its current form, you know, we think it's a very a very nascent market. Um, telcos are, are getting their heads around AI and, and machine learning. Uh, and that's even before the likes of, you know, the large language models really come into, into play, the chat GPTs and so on. Those are, are having a very interesting um, effect on making people think about what's possible. Um, and so that's, we're going to see that kind of playing out in the, in the coming years. So I think there's no, no question that, that in broad terms, AI is going to uh, form a very significant part of, of how everyday operations function in, in telco. I think the idea that we're going to kind of turn everything over to the machines tomorrow or, or next year, that, that's not going to happen. But we are going to see a steady evolution, not least because so many of the, uh, the functions uh, for this kind of software are, are simply impossible um, for, for humans. So it's not, it's not a, a displacement opportunity. It's about being able to do things that you, you want to do and your customers uh, want you to do um, that, that just aren't possible any other way. So this is phenomenally powerful technology. And I think as we as we learn to, uh, to apply it and, and explore it, and apply it in the right places. Um, you know that's that's going to be a very significant uh, effect on, on on how this market grows. Yeah, it's an absolutely fascinating uh, area uh, of development, and uh, of course, I'm sure there's a lot of companies out there, both on the technology development and supply side, as well as the network operator side. They're going to look to this for some differentiation uh, in the market as well. Um, so, uh, looking ahead now, what are the expectations for the coming few years in the network automation software market? Yeah, well, clearly, we, you know, we expect this to to continue to to grow. I think our basic thesis is that um, you know this is attracting more investment away from just you know, feeding the legacy OSS machine, um, and I, I think there's a degree of sophistication and uh, a nuance in in what operators can do with this newer software. Um, that will become you know, increasingly appealing as the industry develops more proof points, more examples, um, and more more evidence of the uh, of the way you can move the needle uh, through automation. Um, I think these aren't just you know good ideas; these are very fundamental. I think when we talk about the the challenges that operators face today, uh, again going back to some of the conferences we've been at uh, over the last year, eighteen months, you know there is a sense that we really have to do something different. Uh, we really have to you know, retool uh, in order to pursue growth, um, to be able to execute much more quickly. So, so we certainly expect all of the segments that we've identified uh, to grow. I think the other thing is that you know, we expect to see more of those uh, players in the currently in the other category. Uh, some of them are very large companies. I mean, the hyperscalers, uh, you know, for example, you know, f- feature uh, to a limited extent in our current assessment, but the software technology they're providing certainly is beginning to fit into that uh, network automation software category. So again, we expect to see uh, you know further development of the of the competitor landscape. I think we're several years away from any serious consolidation across network automation software um, because there's so many exciting ideas to be explored there. That will come eventually, but it's not where we are now. Uh, I think for now, it's really a question of, of innovation uh, experimentation and, and seeing what's possible and, and you know, providing the, the, the getting the proof points and showing the outcomes that are that are possible with uh, with this kind of you know intent based you know, orchestration uh, analytics based you know, using AI using the data and, and being much much more efficient so it, it's a it's a one-way trip in, in that sense uh, towards the towards you know what's a, an inevitable future which is you know efficient productive uh, and and to those great experiences for companies and for people. 
Okay, fantastic. Uh, and like you said, uh, none of this uh, really happens uh, overnight. This is a, a pretty long journey, and, and uh, especially with uh, AI Ops, is very early days yet. So lots of really interesting developments to come, I'm sure. And hopefully, you know, we might see some of that uh, uh, investment come back into telecom software again and, and help to drive further innovation in the market. I mean, is that something you expect to see? Yeah, you know, it's um, for those of us who've been in the industry for a, a little while, um, it's it would be fun to see telecom be exciting again uh, from an external point of view. It's it's always been an exciting business to be in, uh, it, you know, it, it, with the innovation and challenges that we that we face. Um, but you know, telecom is kind of you know, as an industry, sort of slightly lost its way uh, to some degree. And I think the sort of things that that companies are doing now and the sort of innovations that, that vendors are providing, you know, makes it possible for, for telecom to become an exciting industry again, attractive and, you know, attracting, you know, fresh talent in and being a great place, a uh, great industry to work within. Um, we are fundamental to to how the world works. There's no question about that. Um, and But I think we can we can do a better job at, uh, at making that plain and, and making it an exciting an exciting business to be in. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, with uh, new terms coming up like the AI native telco, that might help uh, to make this industry that, that we know and love to be uh, just a little bit more attractive and exciting to the outside world. OK, great stuff, Robert. Thanks very much for joining us today and talking about uh, what you're finding out there at Apple Door Research and look forward to chatting with you again in the near future and seeing you at a few more of these conferences in the second half of the year. So great to see you. Thanks very much. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Ray.